Hello and welcome to my how to create a homebrew chapter, as requested by a number of fellow Space Marine fans, and of course when I asked the question over Twitter a good number of people liked the tweet, so I'm just going to run with it. <laughs> now, I know to many the idea and concept of creating a homebrew is reserved for those with a high standard of skill with the brush, sculpting tool and imagination. But in actual fact, it doesn't take much to put your own stamp on the ever-expanding universe of Warhammer 40k. Whether it's your own version or something that's going on in your local gaming community. With a literal unnumbered amount of loopholes within the law and constant changes, which leave whole sections up to interpretation of the reader, like the possibility of Traitor Gene C Primaris, for example, or long since forgotten Necron Dynasties. The act of creating a homebrew has never been easier, and it is definitely an aspect of the hobby that I find possibly the most interesting, as well as an essential part of hobby health, as I have mentioned in previous videos. Now, I want to start with the creative aspect of engaging in creating a homebrew chapter, no matter what it is, whether it's an entire army or just a unit that you want to do for a kill team, for example. You are only constrained by your own imagination, and for those of you who may struggle in that regard, then there are a wealth of talented people within the community who are more than happy to sit down and talk through ideas, concepts, all we have to do is look at uh, larger projects like the Allied, Allied Astartes. They are more than happy to help. Especially when it comes to Space Marines in general, pretty much every major aspect of human history has already been used in one way, shape or form to create a official chapter, leaving little for the fans to play around with unless you dig a little further, picking out specific themes or obscure cultures from Earth's own history. There is, however, the opportunity to build on more obscure themes, as well as older, more vague pieces of fluff not yet expanded upon by, the, by official sources. So, with all this in mind, here is my three-step process on how I personally build a homebrew Space Marine chapter, as requested by you lot, so thank you for that. I've used the same three-step plan for four separate chapters at this point, including the most recent Umbra Wolves, and to be honest, step one and two are interchangeable depending on how you personally feel they fit, uh, but for me, I've always steered you know, on the same three steps. Finding your inspiration. Now, this could be from a variety of different sources, or all from the same one. As previously mentioned, many themes and concepts have already been used, but it's how you use it which makes it your own, if that makes sense. A colour scheme can be changed slightly or adapted to make it more unique and personable to you. Whether it's the colour scheme itself, an emblem, even a name, especially when it comes to Space Marines, there are a number of pieces of fluff from all the sources that tell of the possibility that multiple chapters use the same name. Take the Minotaurs for example, there was at one point references as to the chapter being at full strength in multiple locations across the ga galaxy. Which in turn has raised a number of theories about the chapter, but the idea and concept itself is still there. Your inspiration could simply come from a character design, or maybe from your specific playstyle on a particular console game. You like sneaky backstabby characters? Raven Guard successes. You have an affinity for fire? Salamanders, just to mention a few easy ones. However, what I will say is don't worry too much about originality. Even though essentially my current homebrew is 40k version of the Lunar Wolves, I've still been able to make them my own. And I know I'm not alone in that regard. A quick Google search brings up a number of 40k Lunar Wolves, each with their own spin and characters. The more you force it to be 100% original, the more you are likely to burn yourself out and this can lead to a complete halt to any ideas you have, which for yourself is a shame. Step 2. Colours. <laughs> now this is why I feel like step 1 and step 2 can be interchangeable, because sometimes you have a colour scheme in mind before anything else. Personally with a previous chapter, the Anvil Guard, I had a colour scheme 
before I even had who their parent chapter was, what their background or combat style was. The colours came easier than having to comb through various websites and books to find that source of inspiration. So if you already have a colour scheme in mind, run with that first, focus on the inspiration second. I find testing as colour scheme a few times on either one of the various paint testers you can find online, or maybe if you're really arty, you know, you can use pen and paper and pencil or Photoshop, or better still if you happen to have a few click together space marines kicking around, give them a try. The more you test and play around with the colours, the more chance you have at creating something unique to you. It also means when you come to your first miniature, what may have been a plain colour scheme with no details or accessories could end up looking like some battle-hardened veteran that has been lost in the warp for a hundred years, festooned with battle honours and laden down with ammo pouches, grenades and battle damage. Step 3. Development. Now, once you've found your inspiration and the colour scheme you like, here's what personally I feel is the best part. Starting to make them fit in your desired part of the galaxy. Now, whether that's within a local gaming community where you're running a campaign on some made-up world, or something more along a broader scope, it doesn't really matter. I find not only are deep lore dives rather therapeutic, but you may end up learning something that you didn't know before about a particular faction or sub-faction, character or area of the galaxy. With your previous colour tests and sources of inspiration, you can, to an extent, create something rather unique, maybe not to the 40k universe, but definitely unique to you. This is an important aspect of creating a homebrew, as it defines your project further. You can use this project, as mentioned pre previously, hobby health videos, to overcome certain negative aspects and shed them from yourselves. Throughout the development step, you will find your chapter may take on a whole new life of their own, leading to grander projects, as well as more fun and immersive gaming experience, as you are more likely to feel a connection to your minis, especially if they are something of your creation. You can become invested in a unit or character's progress from battle to battle, adding new details like honours or battle scars. You may even want to promote a sergeant to becoming a veteran sergeant for a whole new unit as part of an ever-growing project. I myself remember doing that a number of times, having to buy uh, a whole new stone guard unit and making the sergeant from one tactical squad now the veteran sergeant of this stone guard unit. This can then lead to further opportunities to play around with colour schemes, unit markings and interesting details that you hadn't previously included or thought of. Now this isn't to say you won't have the same degree of immersion or fun when you're playing your faction built army, but it tends to lean to a high point when creating a homebrew chapter, seeing your characters achieve fantastical heroic feats or units pull off the unbelievable. Further to the immersion, these steps may lead to a number of creative aspects, as well as the chance to push the boat out with conversions and stylizing your force in an image that is appealing to you. Often enough, there will be a chapter of marines that fits into a specific playstyle or niche aesthetic, but you, if you have always wanted to put your own mark on the galaxy in your own way, why not give it a go? Start small, just a character or a basic marine. Maybe you have yourself envisioned as a space marine captor, or better still, a chapter master. Then why not? The sky is truly the limit, and yes, I'm mentioning marines a lot, and that's because, well, it's in the title, but this doesn't always apply to the other factions. Granted, with some it's a lot more difficult, and I might do a piece about that at a later date, but for now, these three same steps apply for every faction, not just Space Marines. I've had a lot of fun over the years creating and developing my own characters, background, feel and aesthetic, and I find that, as previously mentioned, if you try and force it too much, you end up being rather burnt out, or you end up losing track of your various ideas. 
you want to just let it flow and it will eventually all come together. It doesn't matter whether you're doing this for your own personal enjoyment or because you want to get involved in a larger community project. Creating a homebrew should always be a fun experience and it opens up a whole other level of gaming and hobbying that I feel for the most part is kind of missing from the hobby. I'm always happy to talk homebrew chapters so if you want to join me during one of the many painting sessions and chat please follow the link below to the channel's discord or tag me over on twitter or facebook I'd love to hear about your homebrew chapters. As always thanks for listening don't forget to like and subscribe and leave a comment below it's always nice to hear feedback and your views on the topic. Stay safe and keep on hobbying.